Hello guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed my chapter 17 video about uh, explaining the concepts of longitudinal waves. So in this video I'll be solving five problems that covers the most important points on longitudinal waves or chapter 17. So uh, you'll see the questions listed in the description below. So please read the question before uh, watching the video, before watching each uh, explanation of each question. Do read the question in the description. And I'll be moving past this time. Um, this is a suggestion uh, that I got from someone uh, who told me that uh, your videos are pretty slow, so I need to move faster. So do read the question, and uh, I'll be doing some sort of timestamps uh, in order for you to kind of locate these questions uh, in the video. And good luck, let's get going. All right, so uh, in the first question, it says that we have a bike. Uh, Imagine that this is a bike, and the bike is moving at uh, 2.44 meters per second, and we have an ambulance. Uh, so the ambulance is a car with a siren. So the siren is uh, emitting sound waves, okay? So uh, the siren is emitting the sound waves at a frequency of uh, 1600 hertz. So it says in the question that the ambulance is moving, and then it surpasses the bike, so its velocity is going uh, in this direction, away from the bike, and the bike is going at the velocity of 2.44 meters per second towards the ambulance. And uh, the, the bicycle uh, is hearing a new frequency of uh, 1581 hertz. And so we know the original frequency, which is uh, uh, 1600 hertz, and we know the new frequency that the bike is hearing, which is uh, 1581 hertz. And we know the bike velocity, and uh, we know the velocity of sound, which is given in the problem, which is uh, 343 meters per second. And uh, we're asked to find the velocity of the source of the sound, which is the ambulance. Okay, so the new frequency, we just uh, plug, in, uh, plug in our uh, givens in the Kepler's equation. So this is a problem that testing you on Kepler's, uh, Kepler's equation. So. So this is the new uh, frequency, which is uh, 1581. Uh, and this is the original frequency, which is 1600. And that's going to be multiplied by the velocity of sound, which is uh, 343, over the velocity of sound, 343. And here we're going to have the velocity of the detector, which is the bike, so which is 2.44. And the velocity of the source is our uh, our uh, kind of non-given, so we need to solve for it. So here, how can we pick the signs? Uh, so we know that uh, the detector is moving towards the ambulance. So the ambulance just passed the detector, and uh, the velocity of the detector is moving towards the ambulance. So we must have a positive sign. Because we know that when we move closer to the source, we must uh, have a frequency that is higher than the original frequency, so, so here we have a positive sign. So, and we know that the source is moving away from the detector, so its velocity is heading this direction, and the detector is right here. So if it was moving to the detector, then uh, we're gonna have uh, a minus sign, but since it's moving away, we're gonna have a positive sign here. And uh, so we know that when uh, the source or, or the detector is moving away from the other, we need to make this uh, as small as possible, or actually smaller than this original frequency, so we, we, we add uh, values in the denominator. So now we have set up uh, our equation, and it's time to plug things in. Like this here, uh, you could just plug it in your calculator, and then uh, click shift solve, and you also for this variable, and you will be figuring out that this variable is equal to 6.6 .6 meters per second. And that's your answer. All right, so uh, for problem number two, we are given two sources of sound, okay? And we're given a point. A point is like a, a detecting point. Like, imagine that this is a human ear, for example. So uh, the first source is like uh, 4.01 meters from the detector, and the second source is uh, 3.94 uh, meters from the detector. So uh, we know here delta L, or the difference in paths between the two sources, and we're asked to find uh, the phase difference. 
So uh, delta L is basically the phase difference in meters, and we want to convert it to the phase uh, difference in radians. So we're given also the velocity of the waves, of the two waves, and we're given the common frequency, which is uh, uh, 544 hertz. So and we're solving for the phase difference. Okay, so we have an equation. It says the velocity of the wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So we're going to need the lambda of the wavelength because uh, we know that the ratio between delta L and lambda is equal to the ratio between uh, the phase difference and 2 pi because these two are different, uh, I mean are the same thing or represent the same thing, they represent one cycle of the, of the wave so and here is um, so if you have such a relationship you, when, uh, and you have this value and you have uh, you can solve for lambda from that equation and we, we know what 2 pi is so we just cross multiply and we, uh, we could solve for the phase difference Okay, so how can we find lambda? So from this equation, which is uh, you need to memorize, I'm not sure if it's in the equation sheet, but uh, you divide both sides by the frequency, and you just plug numbers in from the givens, and then uh, you're gonna have the wavelength. All right, so once you have the wavelength, you just, uh, you know, put it right here instead of this number, 0 0.630. Uh, and uh, you just subtract this length from this length, so we can get the path difference, or delta L. If you do so, you're going to get 0 0.50 meters, and that is going to be equal to the phase difference over 2 pi. So now it's just time to kind of cross multiply. So if you multiply 2 pi by this number uh, times 0 0.15 is equal to the phase difference times this number. So you have to divide both sides by this number, so you're going to get this 0 0.63, uh, 630. And uh, if you plug this into your calculator, you'll be getting something like 1.5 radians. And that is the phase difference, okay? So 0 0.5 and with a margin of error of 3%. And that's the question. So for question number three, uh, the question says that we have a fork, and the fork is kind of moving like that in, in a simple harmonic motion with a frequency of 307 hertz. And we take this uh, fork and we, uh, Put it near a pipe, a pipe that is closed at one end and at one end and open at the other. So the fork will be moving the air inside the pipe, uh, constructing a sound wave inside the pipe. So and it says that the sound wave will resonate, uh, which means that we're going to have a standing wave inside the pipe uh, at this frequency and. Uh, we were given the shortest length of the pipe which, at which uh, the, uh, the sound will resonate. So if we're giving the frequency, which is fixed, so we have this equation first. Uh, so if you have a pipe that is closed at one end, uh, the equation or for the frequency of uh, the standing wave that can form in the, inside the pipe is given by this equation. So uh, we're given the frequency, so it's uh, 307 uh, or 307. And uh, we don't know what L is, and we don't know the velocity of argon, which is uh, asked in the question. Actually, uh, we need to figure out the velocity of argon, and I mean the velocity of sound uh, inside uh, or in argon when the medium is argon. All right, so uh, we're given that uh, the length, uh, which is uh, forty times uh, ten to the negative two. So it says the length is 40.1 centimeters, so we need to turn that into meters. So we will multiply the this quantity by uh, 10 to the negative 2, so we can have it in SI units. Okay, so if this value is fixed, uh, and this value is fixed, and um, so we're, we're told that this is the shortest length uh, at which the, the air will, will, will resonate, okay? So uh, if frequency is fixed, then um, if we increase the denominator, if, if, we, if we increase the length of the pipe, then we're gonna have to increase n as well in order to keep this value fixed. And um, so, uh, and this is the shortest length. So which means uh, that n here must be the smallest value as well. Uh, we know that the smallest value for n is one. 
because uh, for a pipe that's close at one end, we have n equal to one, three, five, seven, etc. all the odd numbers. So in order to keep the frequency fixed, uh, we need to keep um, these two values at the shortest length or the shortest value. So if this is one, then this whole term disappears. And we could just cross multiply here. So we're going to have this number multiplied by this number. And if you plug that into your calculator, then you're going to be getting a velocity of 492 uh, meters per second. And that's the answer. Okay, so uh, question number four is our second to last question. And it says that if we have a source that emits uh, this amount of power, which is 0.78, and uh, if the detector here is, is detecting a, a sound level of 47.1 decibels. So uh, in this question, uh, we're given the sound level and we're given the amount of power that the source emits. And we're asked to find the distance between the source and the detector. So we know that the average power is related by, to the radius or to the distance between the source and the detector. Why do we say radius? Because it's a wall, okay? Uh, we have already discussed that sound waves uh, spread out in a spherical sort of manner. So the equation that relates the power with the R involves I, or the intensity. But we're not given intensity here, we're given sound level. So all we need to do is to actually turn sound level into intensity. By this equation, which is you're gonna take straight out, your, your, straight out of your uh, formula sheet, and we have, uh, here is a gentle reminder that uh, sound level is the same thing as intensity. Sound level is the same thing as intensity, but uh, the only difference is that this one is expressed uh, in a logarithmic sort of manner. So uh, we know what this value is uh, because it's given the question, which is uh, 47.1 and times 10 log 5 of 10 over, uh, actually, actually the argument of uh, log is uh, the intensity over the reference intensity. So we know that the reference intensity is 10 to the 12, or negative 12, negative 12. So uh, if you know some algebra, you know that uh, if you divide both sides by 10, we're gonna get 7, 4, 1, log 10 of i over i naught. So we know that i naught is 10 to the negative 12. So uh, if you understand some logarithms, uh, you, you will know that this statement right here or this whole statement, it means that to what power do I raise n, uh, I mean, to, do I raise 10 to, which is this here, to, to, take, to kind of get this value or the argument of log. This is straight out of your math kind of rough figure uh, to understand how log works. So raise this power, 10 to the 7.41, and you will get the argument of log over i naught. And now let's multiply both sides by i naught. So we're going to have 10 to the negative 12 times 10 to the 7.41. Uh, and you'll get your intensity. So once you get this intensity, you will just um, now turn your work into this equation. So we know what intensity is. We know the average power, which is given the question. And we know what 4 pi is. So we can solve for r or the distance between the source and the detector. So a little bit of playing with this equation, you'll get r is equal to the square root of the power over the intensity times four pi. And if you plug your values in, uh, the intensity we just calculated here, and uh, you plug it in this equation and then in your calculator, and you'll be getting uh, 49.2 meters. And that's your answer. Okay, so uh, problem number five uh, is our last problem, and it's the most challenging problem uh, out of these five problems. So uh, the problem is asking, uh, what is the time period that it takes a particle of air to move half of its maximum distance from its half of, a, half of the maximum distance to the negative half of the maximum distance? All right, so and we're given the uh, equation of the particle. So first of all, we know that uh, in longitudinal waves, the particles move like that. And this whole distance is the amplitude. So we're asked what, what time it takes to move from here to here. All right, so uh, since we have the particle equation, we, can, we could plug in this location and this equation. And so we have this equation right here. 
And the other application, uh, we've like it's here, so we have this equation. And one thing uh, that we need to know is we're talking about one particle, so the x here is constant. So it doesn't change. X, uh, kx and kx uh, uh, are the same thing. But the only thing that's changing on here is the time and the output of the function. All right, so uh, since we have, uh, a, so we have a system of equations, okay? Equation one and two. And through this system of equations, we can solve for time difference. All right, so we uh, have SM here on one side, so we cancel it. And same thing here. So we're gonna have uh, one half is equal to cosine blah, 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 and also negative one half uh, is equal to cosine blah, blah, blah. All right, so uh, if we take cosine inverse of both sides, uh, we're gonna get the argument of the first equation, the cosine of the first equation is equal to cosine inverse of one half. And if we do the same thing to the second equation, we're gonna get the argument of the cosine of the second equation is equal to negative one, uh, or the cosine inverse of uh, negative one half. So now, uh, this is equation one, and this is equation two. Take equation two and subtract it from equation one. So we're going to get something like this. We're going to get something like cosine inverse of one half, subtract this value from this value, so uh, cosine inverse of negative one half, that is going to be equal to okay. So uh, that is going to be equal to this value minus this value. So if you're subtracting uh, kx from kx, we know x is the same, so they cancel out. And now uh, we subtract this value from this value, so we have uh, pi t1 minus pi t2 which is basically pi times uh, t1 and minus t2. So now we have uh, an equation. We have uh, this equation. Uh, this uh, kind of expression is equal to this expression. So if we divide both sides by pi, we're gonna get uh, t1 minus t2 is equal to this whole thing divided by pi. So this is equal to time one minus time two. Now take this and plug it into your calculator and you'll be getting that time one minus time two is equal to 0 0.3333, uh, infinitely many times. And if you kind of round this number, you're gonna get 0 0.332, round it to three significant figures, and that will be the time it takes for the particle to move um, from half of it, its positive amplitude to half of its negative amplitude. And that's it, that's your answer. All right, guys. Uh, I hope you found my video useful, and I hope you learned something new from that video, from this video, and uh, uh, my video of uh, the next chapter, which is chapter 18, will be coming soon. So at this point, we're done with waves. Uh, we're gonna turn to a whole new topic. Uh, we're gonna turn to a topic that is called thermodynamics. So this is uh, kind of unique thing about physics uh, 102. It's uh, you're studying a lot of different fields in physics. And uh, thermodynamics is, is kind of irrelevant to waves, so we'll be studying new things. Not not okay. So uh, if you like the video, do hit like and uh, make sure you comment down below. Uh, let me know your comments and things you liked about my video and things you didn't like. Your comments are uh, are of very great value, and I do appreciate them. Thank you.